Timeout. Forty Niners have used two timeouts. We're still in the first quarter. Here are the Forty Niners scoring plays. Steve on the board. The second touchdown by William Floyd. A big hole. And William Floyd danced. And for first down before he's taken down by Ken Norton Jr. You know what they do? Sometimes they get Kevin Green in there, and he was on that left side to be a pass rusher and stand up, and then they get him standing up. You see, here's Kevin Green here. Now, now he's playing a little soft. The other guys are in three-point stance. You see their hands down? He's standing up, so now you just, boom, you just get on him and run right at him, and he becomes pretty passive there. See, if it's not a pass, he's just standing there. Corey Springer gets on him, whack! I'll tell you, that really creates a pretty good hole. Leroy Hard is a little bit bigger back. He goes about 225. Here's Cunningham. Caught by Jake Reed near the 10. And one of these things, these, these Minnesota Viking receivers, Jake Reed and Chris Carter, are so big that you can just take like, like a great big old circle and throw it there and get it anywhere in that big old circle, and they're going to get the ball. Yep. I mean, they're big and they're strong, and a lot of times they play like basketball players, where if you're close to them, they'll just shield you out with their bodies. At the 49er 11. Four wide receivers this time. Randall Cunningham hands to Leroy Hoard, and Hoard gets to the 10. See, they tried to do the same thing, Pat. They tried to run at Kevin Green again, and it would have worked, except Tim McDonald, the safety, got up in there. You see, they covered that hole the last time. No one plugged that hole that Kevin Green gave him. Kevin Green in there to be a pass rusher. Again, playing soft, and you see him standing up. You see? Now, look at that hole right there. That's where they want to get into. You see? But here comes number 46, Tim McDonald. He also knows that, and Tim McDonald is in the hole. Here's where Cunningham can be dangerous. Second and nine with his running ability. Back to throw it is Cunningham. Touchdown, Chris Carter. The Vikings are on the board. They made it look easy. Or his passing ability. He really oh. zipped that one in there. Marquez Pope, back for his first game, is out there. Here's Marquez Pope, and he's out here playing man-to-man -man on, 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 on Chris Carter. You see right here. Here's Carter here. He, he comes in motion. Marquez Pope just gives him a little too much of that inside. And Carter just takes it. Randall Cunningham sees it and zips it right in there. Berger will hold. Extra point is good by Eddie Murray. It's a name we've been saying for a long, long time. 14-7, San Francisco. Stopping the conversion attempt to preserve the Jets' victory. Watch, here's Marquez Pope, and he's playing Chris Carter. Now, as Chris Carter goes in motion, Marquez Pope has to go with him all the way. Carter gets him out here, gets him playing a little soft, and then runs a slant on him. See, he starts him over here on the left side, runs him across. Now, see, Mar Marquez Pope has him all the way, has him all the way. But as he goes across, Marquez Pope also loosens up. Yep. And then when they get to the other end, Chris Carter can run that slant. He yeah, had to run through and by a lot of people. That's a tough thing yeah. in the goal line. That's one of the reasons you do that is because not only does he have to run through and by a lot of people, but he has to be looking at the people that he's running through and by and take his eyes off the receiver. Chuck Levy. Randall Cunningham was pretty good on that drive, too, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah, he was four out of five. No signs of rust. After the ball goes off the tee two times, they bring in a holder, and that's exactly what they're doing here. They don't want that holder to put too much pressure on the ball. But the holder looks like he's shaking a little, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Probably afraid he's going to switch. You can't do that. You can't take your finger off before the kick. Levy cut down at about the 30. Isn't that the old thing in the street, but <laughs> you have to 
you have to keep your finger there and you can't take it off before the ball gets there. Look, he has his finger off the ball. He's afraid. <laughs> That's the old thing. You're not supposed hey. to flinch. You're not supposed to look. You're not supposed to have to kick a moving ball. <laughs> Remember, uh, that's the one that Lucy always yeah. gets Charlie Brown on. It's a golf rule. You can't <laughs> hit a moving ball. Lucy says, I won't do it, I won't do it, I won't do it. Then Charles Brown goes to kick it, and Lucy does it. That was Jones in motion. Pass caught by Stokes. A bullet from Steve Young. Fourteen seven. Saturday at the Fox NFL special. All starts with America's most watched pregame show. Then it's a crucial NFC East battle as the Washington Redskins head to the Big Apple to take on the New York Giants. Don't miss all the action when playoff hopes will be on the line Saturday beginning at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific here on Fox. And again, that's on Saturday. That's Greg Clark. Took a blow to the lower back. Brook out of the pack. That's the first down. Stopped by Jason Fisk. San Francisco's first two possessions. They started at their own 20. Seven plays. They scored. At the Minnesota 45, 10 plays. And they scored. They lead 14-7. And then the Vikings uh, didn't get the ball for the second time until that last drive. And then Randall Cunningham took them 49 yards in the score. Two tight ends set up for the 49ers. First down. Young will appear to be changing the play. Floyd stays in the block. Young wheels it outside to Owen. Saw a buddy fly by. Yeah, Steve Young looks very comfortable in the pocket yeah. today. And again, I think the reason for that is they started off the first part of the game with excellent pass protection. And if there's anything that will make a quarterback comfortable, it's good pass protection. And you don't want to let anyone get around his feet. You watch him. If you can just go back here, and you see when he throws, there's no, no one around him. So he can find a lane, step up, follow through, throw the ball. Frank Pollock is the left tackle. That's William Floyd, and that appears to be a San Francisco first down. Well, William Floyd ran like a fullback there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he just put his head down and just rammed in there. That's the way you're supposed to do it. I think William Floyd is going to be seeing more running as a result of Garrison Hurst not being there. I don't think Kerry Kirby's going to do it all. Kerry Kirby will do some. William Floyd has been used mostly the last couple of years as a, as a blocker and a pass receiver, but I think now he's going to be used more as a runner. Well, he almost has to step up with Garrison Hurst. Out for about five or six weeks. Here's Young back to throw it. Pumps. Got it to Stokes. Who lost it, but out of bounds. Dwayne Washington. Yeah, we were talking how big these Minnesota Viking wide receivers are. Well, Carol Owens and J.J. Stokes are pretty big themselves. Watch Dwayne Washington is out here playing man-to-man, -man, but he's playing off him. And you see, Stokes gave him that little inside move. That held him, and it also got him inside to give him room for Steve Young to throw the ball to the outside and gave him room between where Washington was and the sideline. So he had the depth, but he also had the width to throw that one. And Young threw it perfectly. No one can stop anyone in this game. Up the middle, touchdown to Terrell Owens. is what these 49er fans are used to explosive offensive football this guy is going to be something before he's through well, that's Terrell Owens he, you know again we talk about the big guy in the slot and see what a big guy can do he just uses his arm and he's just beyond that defender right there Dwayne Washington didn't do anything I mean if you're going to be up there you have to misdirect him redirect him a little with a jam but if you don't these guys are going to kill you Extra point is good by Anderson. It's 21-7. Well executed. Touchdown by San Francisco. Sam, I am.
Aflac, ensuring over 40 million people worldwide. And by Citizen. Today, more than ever, Citizen is how the world tells time. In the second quarter, 12-21 left. Before halftime, San Francisco 21, Minnesota 7. 49ers' Tommy Thompson set to kick off. Mo Williams and David Palmer back deep for the Vikings. It's going to be Palmer on the bounce. See if he can field it. Slipped on the 10. Or at about the 10 and is down at about the 8-yard line where the Vikings have a long way to go. Randall Cunningham is starting at quarterback for the Vikings because their regular quarterback, Brad Johnson, had surgery last week. And he's on the phone with us now. And Brad, first of all, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm doing okay. I had surgery on Thursday and uh, couldn't have had a uh, better better surgery than, than what I went through. And, and right now, I just need a lot of rest and recovery time. And, and I uh, wish I was out there playing with those guys right now. So do they. Brad, do you have any plays from the uh, nine-yard line when you got 91 yards to go? Yeah, well, I got to get a fax me over the game plan this week, and, and it's kind of like playing your game, John, uh, playing uh, Madden football. And I tell you, that was a little ISO. Uh, we call that dot left 50 ISO. And, and uh, really, he's going down the script, calling plays like he wants to, but it's really a matter of uh, coming down to execution. And we've had some, uh, some uh, penalties that have kind of put us in first and 15, and wrong situation so far yeah, and then and then your defense has been having problems uh you know they started running those slants and then they run the slant and go on them and on this field that's 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 been tough in your defensive back definitely so that we we look like we're trying to go one-on-one -on -one with him a lot and uh a lot of teams have been throwing slants on us in a few seconds ago they set up the uh slant and go and and uh, they've, they've been moving the ball at will on us and we really gonna have to establish uh, either take away the run or take away the pass right now they're just uh the ball on us and hopefully we just can't panic too early and and get some points and, and give it gives ourselves a chance to come back in the second half here that was robert smith with a pass from cunningham not enough for a first down third and three brad yeah what do you got here for third and three do you have a script this is third and three uh let's see looks like we're gonna go with uh we got change left here and you got we'll three wide receivers here. so he has a choice going to either receiver uh back will be running uh flares out in the, out in the wings well, there they go. Uh, he's, he's going. Uh, he got flushed out of the pocket. And that's time to make a play. Kevin Green around the corner. The back checked him before he went out. And Brad Johnson, nice enough to be on the phone with us. Yep, and Brad told us the play there was going to be. You see both both backs are flaring out to their respective sides. The, the ends were all running curls. Randall Cunningham looked and didn't have anything to throw to. He didn't have anything open there when Kevin Green finally got there. Berger back to punt. Wazeke fields it. There's a flag on the play. Gives us a chance to thank Brad Johnson. You're supposed to be resting, I know, Brad. But yeah, thank you uh, very much for taking this time. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to be uh, probably recouping for the next couple months and and again, I wish I was out there, but I appreciate you guys having me on today. Well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Roughing the kicker, 15 yards, first down. Kevin Mitchell of the 49ers penalized for roughing the kicker. Yep. You see, one of the things that punters have always been taught is, is to keep your leg up there. You see Mitch Berger, and, and part of that is his follow-through. He just keeps the leg up there, and Kevin Mitchell just runs right under the leg. Yeah, you're supposed to pose as long as you can. That's that's the thing because any any after the ball leaves the punter's foot, you can't touch him. You can't touch him, and if you touch him, then that's roughing the punter. So every punter in football has always been taught after the ball leaves to stay up there as long as you can. And I think Kevin Mitchell just walked into one. It's pretty tough to do, you know. But stand and on one, on one leg and keep your other leg yeah, up in the air. Everyone at home ought to try that. Yeah. Stand on your left leg and put your right leg over your head. That's Robert Smith and left side, not much. Now because if you can do that, then you almost deserve the penalty. Yeah. I mean, you almost deserve to get the ball back and get a first down for oh, your team. You might should be in another business. If you can do that for a long time. Yeah, but I don't know that it pays as well. You mean something like ballet? Yeah, that's just what I was thinking of. It probably doesn't pay as well. No. You may have a lot of fascia problems. <laughs> yeah. Two tight ends. 
They need seven for a first down, and Cunningham drops back. Rules it in the flat to Robert Smith, who is brought down by Marquez Pope. And now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat and John, Jeff Hostetler at the helm for the Redskins. Paul is his first touchdown as a Washington player. Back to Larry Bowie. Washington just added a field goal, leading Arizona 17-0. Skins need it to keep their playoff hopes alive. Back to Pat and John. Third and four for Minnesota. They trail by 14, and they need it. The Vikings do. Here's Cunningham. Lost it. Pass is caught. First down by Matthew Hatchett, who's the fastest of all the Viking receivers. Yeah, he's a he's a rookie from Langston, and Chris Walsh is their is their normal third wide receiver. He's not active today, so Matthew Hatchett becomes the third wide receiver. And again, they put him on on on, on Drakeford, and it seems like any time that the that the 49ers get in in nickel defense that everyone looks to see where Drakeford is, and they go to work on him. First and 10, Minnesota. They've moved out to their own 43-yard line. A handoff is to Robert Smith. And Smith squirms for, oh, four or five yards. Pretty good short run. Eddie Green was saying last night that he'd like to see Robert Smith carry the ball 25 or 30 times. And, you know, to do that, you have to be in that kind of game. And, and you know, if, if you start getting where you're three or four touchdowns behind in the, in the second half, then you just can't keep running the ball. But if you can stay close to them, then the running game can still be part of your game plan. Second and five. Smith again. Got a yard, that's all. 49ers really played that cutback well. You see Tim McDonald was right back there. Sometimes you play the onside very aggressively and sometimes you also play the backside very aggressively and watch how they play the backside they're going to start in here and then watch how they play the cutback back on this side you see he starts to the right but watch back here you see here's tim mcdonald he's just waiting backside for the cutback of robert smith third and four three wide receivers from minnesota palmer's the back Here's Randall Cunningham doing what he does best. I think that's a free one there. I think Kevin Green was yeah. offside. Oh, he was. No question about it. That's one way those those speed pass rushers get there is they have to beat you off on the snap, and then sometimes they, they jump before the ball is snapped. Defense, offside, number 91. Penalty declined. There was down. Kevin Green. They're going to see Kevin Green right here. In fact, he may be in the neutral zone before he even makes a move. But he just leaves early there. And again, they're always trying to get the jump on that ball. You know, any little thing to get the jump on that offensive tackle. And when you're going against an offensive tackle like Corey Stringer, who weighs about 355 pounds, you have to beat him with your speed. Power in motion. Charles Evans straight ahead. We spoke to Randall Cunningham yesterday about his scrambling ability. I don't know when I'm going to run. I used to plan to run when I was in Philadelphia, you know, third down and long. You don't want to force an interception and give them the ball back run, and hopefully you can pick up half of it and punt the ball away. But uh, it's really just an instinct thing now, you know, when you're 34 years old. You don't, I hope they don't design plays for 34-year-old quarterbacks to run around the ends or up the middle or anything like that. Second and seven. Leroy Hoard at the line of scrimmage. No more. I think Lee Woodall had something to say about that. Number 54, he came flying down. He was on the outside, and he just come flying down that line. That, that's, that's what you call when you see a run flattening out. And Lee Woodall did a heck of a job on that play of flattening out. Brack at the 49er practice, some guy I didn't know yesterday when we were watching, said to me, hey, Vander Holyfield's out there. Yeah, I know it. Watch him right here. You see him? You see how he flattens yeah. out there? You start up field, and then you see that, and then you just flatten out to the ball. Woodall looks exactly like a Vander Holyfield. Here's Cunningham. David Palmer, boy, some pretty nifty moves by Palmer and a flag on the play. 
That's why David Palmer's in there. David Palmer is in there as the as that third down back, you know, that catches those passes and could do those kinds of things. Boy, that had to be a late holding. That, yeah. That, that wasn't offensive line. That was a downfield holding. During the run, illegal block in the back on number 61 of the offensive team. That's a 10-yard penalty. We'll repeat third down. Everett Lindsey Palmer had the first down. Yeah, you just watch here. You see, here's Palmer right here. And and there's there's Everett Lindsay right there, and and in fact not only did he block him in the back, but but Palmer was already beyond him. I mean he was he was like yeah. three or four yards behind him. I used to have a rule when I coached: if you can read his name, don't block him. And and some of those names got to be a little tough, so I said <laughs> yeah. if you can see their name, don't block them. <laughs> I think that's better. Everett Lindsay saw a name and blocked it. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California. Overhead, today's pilot is Charles Russell from Downey, California. And right now, the ride is smooth. I think. Third and five. Leroy Howard, first down, Vikings. Inside the 49er 25, Ken yep. McDonald made the stop. That's part of the Vikings' plan, again, to get Kevin Green in there, get the pass rusher in there, get him standing up. You see, and they give you that wide hole, because here's a defensive lineman, here's your next defensive lineman, so this is the hole that they're trying to hit. And you can see Kevin Green, by lining up that wide, is just giving him that hole, yep. and the Vikings are taking it. So when they come in with their third down pass rush, the Vikings are going to run right at Kevin Green. Robert Smith looking for a hole, a flag on the play. And you see the difference. They put Roy Barker in there, and Roy Barker is a run stopper. They block down, and Roy Barker just stuffs up no that whole side. No infraction on the play, second down. No infraction on the play. No flag. I didn't mean to drop it. Yeah, we saw Kevin Green. We saw his play. Now watch Roy Barker and how he plays that side. And when he, he comes down there, you see how he closes it down right there? Play, plays with his outside shoulder. There is no way that they are going to have that hole when he's in there. He is. Stalemate with a pullback. 15th play in this drive coming up. Drive coming up next. Robert Smith, the deep back. Randall Cunningham looking and throwing. Caught. Touchdown by Chris Carter. What a catch by Chris Carter. I didn't think he had a chance. That is a heck of a catch. Chris Carter was saying last night, we were talking about those officials, and sometimes they call a play uncatchable, and he said all the great catches he makes are uncatchable. And well, this was one of those uncatchable I'll ones. I'll tell you what, was it ever. Watch Chris Carter, and, 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 and Randall Cunningham throws it where either Chris Carter is going to catch it for a touchdown, or it's not going to be caught. There's no way that caught ball could be intercepted. Well, equally is outstanding as the catch is the way he gets his feet down that is amazing watch the left foot right there and then he gets the right foot and both feet just slide right in what a heck of a play by chris carter good throw let's watch the pattern again here by chris carter the good pattern the great catch and then keeping both feet in bounds and then let's listen to what happens after he keeps both feet in bounds. Those cleats scraping the parab. Yeah, the parab and the guy holding that parab there, his, his nickname is his hard hat. It should be. <laughs> Look at him, he's so proud of himself. <laughs> he hung in there, man. You gotta hang in there. If you're gonna be on a parab and you're gonna be down, that doesn't count, they blew the, they blew the whistle. <laughs> Delay a game on the kicking team. Delay a game on penalty. the kicking team? Yeah, after, after they put the ball down, then they have so much time to kick the ball and they didn't kick the ball in that amount of time. Remember they put that in a couple yeah. of years ago to speed up the game yeah. because the kickers were, you know, rubbing the ball and doing all that stuff. They just put the ball down there and say you have to kick it. You know, but that whole drive, the, you know, we, we, we saw Chris Carter and we saw him at the end how it, 
uh, he hit old uh, Hard Hat in the uh, Parab. But it all started with this guy right here, yeah. Mitch Berger. Remember, keeping his foot up there and getting that 15-yard penalty on the punt and getting a new first down. That's a heck of a drive. 92-yard drive. Yeah, see, Berger, after, after they wind the clock, he has 25 seconds to kick the ball. Short kick. Chuck Levy will field it at about the 12. Levy at the 34. Knocked down. That was Chris Carter's 86th career touchdown. That moves him to number five all time on the record list. Birds are flying. After a slow start, the Falcons have taken to the air. Quarterback Chris Chandler is the second highest rated passer in the league, thanks to the efforts of wide receivers Bert Emanuel and Terrence Mathis. They've won five of their last eight games and have wary opponents looking up in Atlanta. Touchdown, Atlanta! Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Forty nine er ball at their own thirty four twenty one fourteen the forty nine ers lead the Vikings. Steve Young back to throw it. Pass incomplete. The receiver slipped down. Stokes intended or Terrell Owens. Beg your pardon. What four players? This is our Aplac trivia question. What four players have had ten or more sacks in six straight seasons? Four players. More than 10 sacks, six straight years. That's a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah, and of course, you know, of course, 10 sacks in any one year or two years is yeah. good. Dana Stubberfield uh, a couple weeks ago had 15 sacks for this year. Young. Uh, Kirby, thank you, pardon. Again, the question What four players have had 10 or more sacks in six straight seasons? They have to be somebody pretty good. John Randall in this game, Bruce Smith of the Bills, Reggie White, and Lawrence Taylor. You know, in all the years we've been doing this, Lawrence Taylor was the most dominating defensive player that I ever saw. He could take over a game. Right, and, and from here, Joe Montana was the most dominating offensive player I ever saw. And he usually did take over a game. Here's Steve Young. Fakes coming out of the pocket, slides. That is a very appropriate term to be used today, that slide being this, rudd. This is great sliding weather. Yeah. I mean, it's good hitting weather. It's great sliding weather. No one ever gets hurt in this kind of weather. Watch this. I mean, you know, because as you go down, although he does grimace a little as he goes down because he knows that there's an impending hit about to arrive. <laughs> but, but, I mean, when you slide, you get about four or five yards. First and ten, Young back to throw it. By the time, he's going to take off again, and now they catch him from behind. Wayne Clemens brought down Steve Young. The most rushing yards by quarterback Randall Cunningham and Steve Young atop the list, and both in this game. Yeah, and they've been throwing the ball pretty well today, too. Oh, yeah. We've had, I think we've had six possessions so far, and we've had five touchdowns. So, really, these offenses are really clicking, or the defenses aren't stopping anyone. Two minutes left in the first half. 49ers up by a touchdown. Pat Summerall, John Madden. And we're watching the 49ers and the Vikings with the 49ers ahead. 21-14. Second and 12. The 49ers are doing a pretty good job of blocking John Randall. Oh, God, they have indeed. Here. Owens open down the middle. Line. And a first down for San Francisco. And Owens. Limping off. And the 49ers are going with no huddle. Steve Young calling the play in the line of scrimmage. 840-41. Oh, and Pat stayed is in. right side. Yep. Flag on the play. Owens oh, still Both limping start. badly. Offense, number 83, prior on his to the way pass. back to the huddle. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Yeah, watch your blocking. Here's Kevin Gogan, and we were talking about what a good job they're doing on John Randall, and 
Kevin Gogan is so big that he can just darn near stand up and let Randall bull rush him. And then Chris Dahlman, the center, is always looking to slide to John Randall's side. Young to throw, chase out of the pocket, and caught, and sacked. Jason Fisk and Steve Young is hurting. They were just talking about what a good job the offensive line was doing, and they're doing a good job on John Randall. And then Jason Fisk out of Stanford comes in and makes a play. No more timeouts for San Francisco. The Dockers khakis halftime coming up as the 49ers hurry up. And Young is back to throw again. He got some room in front of him. And Steve Young's going to take off and slide short of the first down. And there's a flag. He was down sliding, and they hit him. Yeah, there has to be a flag on that because they haven't been calling that in. If the if the quarterback slides head first, then you can hit him. If he slides feet first, Push he is given up. You can't touch him. 24 defense. For a late hit on the quarterback. Can't do that. 15 yeah. yards. First I'm, down. I mean, there's no excuse for that by Robert Griffith. There's no excuse because... Steve Young, when he went feet first, he was saying that he gives up. They, they, they're, they're going to mark the ball right there. There's no way that he can get anything else out of it. And then he comes and makes that late hit, stops the clock, gives the 49ers a first down. That is not disciplined or smart football right Gets there. Gets him in field goal range also. First down, San Francisco. Stops the clock with a minute and six seconds left to play in the first half. 49ers up by a touchdown. A well-prepared team will go into any game knowing all the rules and situations. There was all kind of confusion in the Vikings secondary as Young was trying to set up a screen pass to Kirby and had to just throw it away. Yeah, we see more and more of that, those screen passes that aren't working. I think that you're going to see Kirby is here, and he's going to come off here and get a screen here. But everyone everyone is going to see it. You know, and the, and the line... They're going to come on a blitz, but they start to read it. You see, in the minute that they see screen, they stop rushing, and they just grab the guy that's going out for the screen. Clock is stopped with a minute and three seconds now, second and ten. Three wide receivers. Young back to throw. Somebody swatted at Steve Young, and he runs out of bounds inside the 20 at about the 18. Watch out. And stops the clock. Don't do a Gus Farad. He came awfully close to doing a Gus Farad. There's something bothering Steve Young about someone got in his way or something slippery. The guy that, 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 that flushed him out of the pocket was Jason Fisk again. Number 72 comes up there, and he flushes him out. Steve Young sees that he can't make the first down. Oh. That's what he was upset about. He got hit in the back after he went out of bounds by Ed McDaniel. And well out of bounds. The officials saw the one where he went feet first. They called that. They didn't call that one. Third and eight. Young again, back to throw. Pump fake. Goes deep incomplete in the end zone to Terrell Owen. No flags, and the field goal team will come on. That penalty caused... Yeah, I don't... Excuse me. No, no, no. Go I was ahead. just going to say that the penalty against the Vikings is what got him down in field goal range. You know, Steve, Young, Steve Young looks like he is still hurting from that shot that he took last week from Anthony Davis in Kansas City where the play stopped. And he, can't, he can't quite straighten up. Well, he doesn't look like I mean, he looks like he's about 5 foot 9. The kick is blocked by the Vikings. And they recover. And they have some time on the clock, 46 seconds left. Chris Carter has to go yeah. find his hat. He was ready to go in for halftime. He didn't think that was going to happen. Bunch of luck. You get an overload in the middle, you see, and then a block from the outside. And they just get a push in the middle, and it's going to be right in the middle where they got that push. That was either a low kick. It was a low kick. Or it was, it was just guys getting their hands up. But you shouldn't be able to get that push. They got about a three-step push. That everyone got their hands up in the middle and they didn't get it over. Greg Briggs got the arm on it. Coming up, the Dockers Khakis halftime report. The Vikings have two timeouts to work with. Cunningham. Looked right, through left, incomplete. 
Andrew Glover had it bounced through his arm. Yeah, we were talking about as uh, Bronco Hinnick was over there yep. cleaning off Steve Young. But we were talking about how comfortable in the first quarter Steve Young looked in the pocket. Randall Cunningham has looked very comfortable yes, in the pocket has. for the Minnesota Vikings. And you would think that with you know being out all last year, not playing at all, that there'd be some rust on him. And, no, right. uh, no, no, he looks he looks very comfortable and he, and he looks like you know, he's throwing the ball very well and making good decisions. The rush comes from behind Cunningham. He dumps it. That's David Palmer threading his way around. Owens into the locker room. He was hurt during the week. He got tangled up in practice with Tyrone Drakeford. They thought he had serious injury. Boys, boys, check it out. Vikings have the ball trailing by a touchdown. 30 seconds left. They have one more timeout. Third down, Cunningham retreats and throws. Pass complete. And that'll be enough for a first down. Cunningham yelling out the signals on his way back to the line of scrimmage. And he'd like to get one up there about 20 yards because the Vikings do have one timeout left. Spike the ball and stop the clock with 12 seconds left. They still have that one timeout. That completion was to Andrew Glover. There's the former owner of the 49ers, Ed DiBartolo. His sister now is the president of the team after I'm sure you're aware of the, what went on during the week. Also in attendance, the legendary Bill Walsh. He didn't have white hair. You couldn't see him, could you? No, we saw him at uh, practice. Yeah. He was at the 49 er practice and actually gave a talk to him at the end of the practice. Pass incomplete. Not sure it's intended for whom. In the direction of Chris Carter with Merton Hanks gesturing about things. I think one thing that the Vikings now with third down and seven seconds to go, even though they do have a timeout, I would think the smart play here would just be to run the ball and and let the the time expire and go in and 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 talk about what you're going to do in the second half. Third down, because the last thing you'd want right here is a turnover. Seven seconds left. Forty-nine playing prevent. Vikings going deep, pass incomplete. And a personal foul is going to be called as Chris Carter was hit hard. And the ball is over his head. That's the nickel back for the 49ers, Zach Bronson. Chris Carter's going to have a talk with Zach Bronson about it, too. And Norton's telling Chris Carter personal to get back foul. in the huddle. Unnecessary roughness. The player was hit unsportsmanlike after the pass was incomplete. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Watch the, the Vikings line up in a bunch out there. Just listen to that hit. Whew. Now that's from the previous spot. That's not the spot of the foul. You see, so that doesn't put the Vikings in, in field goal position. That, They're at the 44-yard line right now. That was a little bit unnecessary. I don't think the Vikings are going to get anything more out of it than one play. Two seconds left. Hail Mary time. Throw it as far as you can, as yeah. high as you can. And put the three receivers out to that side. Three big receivers. Cunningham is going to take off with it. I don't know why. He's live. And that would be the end of the first half with the score, the 49ers 21. The Minnesota Vikings 14. Muddy field, but both teams have moved well on offense. Join music's biggest night with host David Spade saluting Jewel. And a special performance by Garth Brooks. At the 1997 Billboard Music Awards live tomorrow at 8, 7 central.
Look who's coming to dinner. Can I call you dad? Holly Shore and Tiffany Andrews Eason star in the dysfunctional comedy Son-in-Law, Tuesday at 8, 7 central. With Plymouth, this is what you pay for. And this is what you get. Take, for example, Plymouth Neon. You get all this. And now these special savings. Get 1500 cash back or 1.9% APR, so you can save over 2700 in finance charges. One more time. This is what you pay for. And this is what you get. Plymouth Neon. Only at your local Plymouth dealer. Where once these ancient nameplates ruled, now each of them For paradigms dot swift. When something wicked in its way comes. Introducing an automobile that outperforms the competition everywhere, including the bottom line, the faster, sleeker, meaner GS. See it now at your St. Louis area Lexus dealer. Buongiorno e benvenuto. Turns of one is our chance to make a really good impression. A passenger's first thought when they step on board is, wow, all this space just for me. The food is fabulous. It's a lovely service. You really have to experience it. Oh, the speed is... It's so comfortable. It's when the Steelers will clinch a playoff spot if the Jets, Sam, go on to lose today. Yeah, and that one was as advertised. That one was a lot of fun to watch. One, because of good plays, big plays. You know, the close practice this week, Bill Cower did in Pittsburgh. Everyone thinking that Carnell Lake is going to be somehow moved around. It was Myron Bell covering Shannon Sharp, held him to one catch for the day and a Pittsburgh win. All right, Sam, in uh, Kansas City, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs just rolled over the Oakland Raiders today. 30 to nothing was the final score in KC. Chiefs on their way to clinching a playoff berth. 3 nothing KC in the first. Raiders, poor tackling. Gunnell Bennett bounces off. Not one, not two, but three Oakland Raiders to score from nine yards out, and the Chiefs are up by 10. It was 13 nothing Chiefs in the second. Rich Gannon ran for a touchdown, threw for another this five-yard run, put the Chiefs up 20 to nothing at halftime. It was 30 to nothing in the fourth. The defense was smothering Jeff George all day long. Dan Williams, one of six sacks for the Chiefs. The defense hasn't allowed a second-half touchdown in their last nine games. That is a new NFL record, 30 to nothing. The Chiefs win to go to 11 and 3 on the year and run their winning streak to four straight. We'll bring you the playoff picture and the rest of the scores and highlights, including big victory by the New York Giants, right after these words from your local station. Look at this. Does he make it? No, that set up a TD Washington up 14 to nothing. Skin 17 to 14 as the Cardinals make a comeback in the second quarter. All right, so here are the NFC division leaders. Giants control their own playoff destiny with that victory. Green Bay clinches. San Francisco, of course, has already clinched in a first round bye. In the wild card race, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay wins its game next week. It is in Minnesota, Detroit, and the others are still in the hunt. Broncos lose to the Steelers today, so the Broncos now lose in terms of the best record in the AFC. Chiefs spank the Raiders big time. Jaguars lose to the Patriots. Patriots now on top of the AFC East by themselves. Colts with Harbaugh leading the way, beating the Jets. Jets in a must-win situation. That's because Kansas City has now clinched the playoff berth. Pittsburgh and New England still looking good as the division leaders. And in a wild-card hunt, you see the look there. Denver, Jacksonville, and Miami Jets right now really looking in serious shape if they don't win this game against the Colts. Bears pick up their third victory, upending the Bills by 17. And the Ravens pick up their fifth victory, 31-24 today, victorious. Falcons continue to improve under Dan Reeves. 4-1 in the month of November. They're improving in December. And the Rams win at 34 to 27. Now I know what you go through when you whip through those highlights. As a matter of fact, some of these folks will be going to local news breaks. Others, you'll find out what I'm talking about when we come back to see Terry do the highlights of the big showdown oh, yeah. in Tampa. Big. Three touchdown passes in four straight seasons. 17-6, the final score, and uh, Sam Weish, I know you were impressed by this uh, Green Bay um, performance today because you took Tampa. <laughs> That's right. And Tampa, yeah. Yeah. All right, Green Bay's in. Tampa needs one more win. They've got the Jets, and then they've got uh, Chicago at home. They'll win one of those two. All right, so clinch a division title and a first round by the Packers have won three straight. They go to 11-3. and three. In Jacksonville, the New England Patriots went in and truly shocked the Jaguar. 26-20, Patriots without Curtis Martin. 
sitting it out with a shoulder injury. 3-0 Pats in the first after Mark Brunel fumble. Drew Bledsoe to Troy Brown, 9 yards. 10-0 Patriots. And Troy Brown is handing out Christmas presents in the end zone. 13-7 Pats in the second. Last seconds of the first half. Bledsoe caps a 78-yard drive with the touchdown pass to Ben Coates. 20-7 New England in the fourth quarter. Reggie Barlow with the Jaguars down 26-13, takes the kickoff at his own eight and re returns 92 yards for the touchdown to pull the Jaguars to within six. But Brunel's Hail Mary as time expired fell incomplete 26-20. And here's a look at the AFC playoff picture. Kansas City is now on top in the AFC West because it has the tiebreaker over Denver. Pittsburgh, a game ahead of Jacksonville in the Central, and New England did themselves a world of good today. They're on top in the AFC East. They own all the tiebreakers right now. This was a pretty impressive performance by the Patriots. It Joe. certainly was. Kurt Martin, Curtis Martin was out. And you know, it comes a time where players have to step up. I felt like the day Drew Bledsoe did that. His numbers, 24 for 35, 233, two touchdowns. This started the first of a three-game brutal schedule. When you think about it, they got to play Pittsburgh now at home, turn around and go at Miami. This is a big game for them, and they stepped up. I think Drew is kind of leading the charge. Meanwhile, the Jaguars see their 13-game home winning streak snap, 26-20, the final score. How about those New York Giants in Philadelphia today? They beat the Eagles 31-21. to Giants lost running back Tyrone Wheatley in the first quarter due to an ankle injury. Scoreless in the first, Eagles rookie quarterback Bobby Hoying has this pass picked off by Jesse Armstead, and he heads down the sideline, 57 yards to the end zone. Armstead had two interceptions today. This one put the Giants up 7 to nothing. Tied at 7 in the second, Tiki Barber rushed for 114 yards. He also caught an 11-yard touchdown pass from Danny Cannell. He gave the Giants a 14-7 lead. And then one play after a Hoying fumble, Cannell to wide receiver David Patton, 40 yards. Giants led 21-7 and won 31-21. Jim Fossil happy, and why shouldn't he be? In the NFC, both San Francisco and Green Bay have clinched their division titles. Both have earned first-round playoff buys. The Giants are on top of the NFC East by at least a game on Washington, depending on what the Redskins do today. Chris, we sit here continuing to shake our heads week after week. What a job Jim Fossil and the Giants He really done. has. And you know, if you're going to go to the playoffs and if you're going to win the division, you have to win games within the division. The Giants this year, 5-0-1 in that NFC. FC's Eastern Division, and this is a football team, especially at their quarterback position. Danny Cannell, I thought, was absolutely huge today. He was threatened with being benched a week ago. Dave Brown was supposed to be the guy who's going to have to come in and save the day today, but Danny Cannell stepped up on a very tough day, very windy conditions, and made the play. Giants have Washington and Dallas on their schedule remaining. They truly have everything to say about who wins that NFC East from here on. In Chicago, the, the Bears beat up on the Buffalo Bills today, 20-3. to The Bills have lost four of their last five. In Baltimore, Jermaine Lewis returned two punts for touchdowns. The Ravens beat the Seahawks. And in New Orleans, the Rams rallied to beat the Saints. 34 to 27. We'll send you back to the Meadowlands for the second half right after these words. In at the half earlier today on behalf of Visa, Robert Dole presented a check of $250,000 to his wife, Elizabeth, the president of the American Red Cross. We are so grateful for the Visa partnership. Uh, it's a strong partnership. And in 1997, Visa has generously donated $1,150,000 to the American Red Cross. This contribution today will help all of the local Red Cross programs here in the Bay Area. Many thanks to you. Steve Young back on the sidelines loosening up. And uh, he had some loosening up to do. He was in pain in the closing seconds of the second quarter. Yeah, he looked like he lost a couple of inches of height. He looked like he was like 5'9 or 5'10. He started the game, I think, around 6'2. But he was getting bent over and bent over and getting shorter and shorter as that first half went on. And this guy's looked pretty good in the first half. It's yeah. His first start in two years. To me, it's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, that he hasn't started a game since September of 1995. He sat out all of last year. In fact, he did television. And then came back this year as a backup. Was happy to be a backup. Wanted to go to Minnesota. Wanted to play for Coach Denny Green. Understood that he was going to be a backup, but thought that was the place to do it. Because Denny Green said one thing to him that made the most sense for Randall Cunningham. He said, when you come to work here, we want you to have fun. And he looks like he's doing that. Well, that'll get a lot of people to work. Yep. Palmer. Coverage teams do their job again as... Right now, let's send you down to Pam Oliver for a report.
All right, thanks, Pat. Talk to Dennis Green at the half. He says offensively he likes what he sees. Felt they were moving the ball pretty well. I'd like to, to see them keep that up in the second half. Defensively, though, he says he's not pleased with what the defense is doing, although they did improve right before the half. Uh, there's an injury note on Terrell Owens. He's got a sprained ankle. He's probable for the second half. Pat? Thank you, Pam. That's a big loss if Owens can't come back for the 49ers in the second half. Vikings at their own 16. Cunningham. Evans, the fullback. Oh, Bryant Young stunted himself right out of the play. Bryant Young, one of the best defensive tackles in football. He really gets off on this one, but watch him here. He's going to take this angle right here, and then Smith runs right by him. Watch Bryant Young. You see him stunt boom, takes the inside. Good block there by Dixon, and that makes the hole for Robert Smith. In fairness to Bryant Young, he is not 100% healthy. No, and then and then getting caught up by David Dixon, the big guard who weighs about 350 pounds, and you're going that way, and David Dixon takes you the way you're going, you're going to create a pretty big hole for your, for your running back. Measure for the first down, and the Vikings got it. How about that right side of that Minnesota Viking offensive yeah. line? David Dixon listed at 352, the right guard. Corey Stringer listed at 353, the right tackle. And they're, by the admission of their coach, heavier than that. That's Robert Smith. And he spins out of the pack. Going to run away from Tim McDonald, who stays after him and chases him out of bounds at about the 45. You know, Marquez Pope did a good job of, of not letting Robert Smith get to the outside, or this could have been a touchdown because Robert Smith is one of the fastest running backs in this league. And you see, he comes to the inside, then he gets to the outside. Now, now, now here McDonald gets an angle on there, and he can keep that angle because Marquez Pope right there doesn't let him get the outside and outrun Tim McDonald, which Robert Smith could do. 19-yard gain, another Viking first down. Cunningham in the pocket. Jake Reed. We spoke to Gary Plummer yesterday about Viking running back Robert Smith. He's a great cutback runner. Uh, it, you see it on film all the time. Players with angles on him, he still beats them to the end zone. Amazing speed. Uh, the only knock on him uh, over the past has been his durability, but he stayed relatively healthy this year, and that's why he's having a great year. Indeed he has. Seven carries, 33 yards today. They'd like to get him the ball more than that. Stays in the block. Pass caught by Evans, the fullback, at the 40. I'm really impressed with Randall Cunningham. Well, I am too. You know, especially the, the comfort and the ease that he's playing this game with. I mean, you would think... Uh, I mean, although he's 34 years old and, you know, he's a veteran of 12 years in the league, but not having played, usually you put a quarterback back there and he hasn't had a live rush against him for years. Then you get that live rush and they usually get a little jumpy. But Randall Cunningham has not been jumpy at all in the pocket today. He's 13 out of 18. That's Leroy Ford. Struggles to stay on his feet and get back to the line of scrimmage. Marquez Pope knocked him out of bounds. He's been out 11 games, Pope back starting at cornerback for the 49ers and that too being out of contact and out of competition for 11 games can cause some rust to form yeah, but he made a he made a big play on that run by robert smith yeah. i mean it didn't it didn't look like a big thing but just by keeping containment and forcing him back to the inside he let tim mcdonald get there if if he weren't out there folk weren't out there that could have been a touchdown third day three wide receivers David Palmer, and that's the first bad throw by Randall Cunningham. But that's a tough pass to throw. That, you know, it's, it's it's funny. I mean, you think of the deep passes in the post and the corners and the ups. You think those are the are the tough ones, but that short loop is probably the toughest pass to throw that there is. And it doesn't look like it should be. Away Zakay back deep for the 49ers. Berger will punt it for Minnesota. Vikings 
down as the ball takes a Viking bounce, and it's down at about the eight and a half yard line by Dwayne Rudd. And the 49ers have a long way to go. They lead, however, by seven. <laughs> is brought to you by Lexus. The future of Lexus is here. Fasten your seatbelt. By Die Hard, America's most trusted battery. Die Hard, what's under your hood? By Energizer, long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going and going. And by Tomorrow Never Dies, starring Pierce Brosnan. Opens everywhere December 19th, rated PG-13. Pat Summerall, John Madden. 49ers put William Floyd in motion. No running back. Steve Young back in the pocket. Gets it out. To Chad Fan, who gets a 49er first down. Now that's one thing that Steve Young has done an excellent job of. Look in the first half. He's thrown to his wide receivers 12 times, completed nine for 126 yards and touchdown. For his tight ends, he was two for two, and running backs three out of four. So He's really spread the ball around. I mean, he, he spread it to wide receivers, a tight end back, but he's also spread it short, medium, and deep. First and ten. Owens a man in motion. Thirty. You see Steve Young now, Pat. He has that Brett Favre thing that after he hands the ball, he carries out some kind of fake. And and Brett Favre just started doing that because he was bored. Well, Steve Young had it first. Had, Steve Young is the same type of guy. I mean, they just do it because they're bored. Now, watch him. Watch him after he hands off. I mean, he's going to go, and then he's going to fake kind of a jump pass or bootleg. See, he just fakes like yeah. he throws it out there. And he says the funny thing about it is, he said defensive guys react to it, and it's stupid. Here he is. Out quickly. Joe Owens. Another 49er first down at the 36. You know, I think these quarterbacks, like a Brett Favre and like a like a Steve Young and, and like a Randall Cunningham that can run, you're always very aware of any move they make because you know that they can do anything with the ball, including running it as well as a running back. So I think they would react more to a ball that a Steve Young would do than, for example, a Troy Aikman would do. That would be a wise choice. Kirby spins out of... One tackler's arms is brought down by Dixon Edwards. Now you don't see that much, do you? The old spinner no. at the line of scrimmage. Usually you see a spinner. If you're going to see a spinner, it's usually downfield. But watch Kirby. He's going to spin right in here at the line of scrimmage. So they just come up to tackle him. Robert Griffin is up there to tackle him. And he just spins right around to the outside and picks up another couple yards. Second down, about six. 9.08 left in the third quarter. 49ers lead by a touchdown. Steve Young. Uh -huh. He got him on the hard count. Steve yep. Young got him. Look out. You can't, can't rumble after the hard count. And you especially don't want to rumble, I don't think, with Kevin Gogan. Well, if there's going to be a rumble around, Kevin Gogan's going to be around the rumble. He'll either start it or go to break it up or somehow be part of it. But that was, was Steve Young on the hard count that drew the Vikings off sides. Now the, the officials are going to talk about it. What can there be to talk about? Encroachment on the defense, number 96. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Now Jerry Ball can do some encroaching. And And he goes at 190. Hey! You know, and that's that's the one. You know, I mean, you're jumpy anyway. Jerry Ball's up there. You're waiting for something to move. And and then sometimes a sound can act like a movement to you. I'm jumpy now after you <laughs> just gave me that hard count. <laughs> <laughs> that's not quite enough, I don't believe, for a 49er first down by Kirby. I got, a, I got a pain in my side. <laughs> I got a cramp. You gave me a hard count. <laughs> Talking about that, I wonder old how Hardhead is doing down there in the end zone on the parab. <laughs> wonder if he ever recovered from that kick in the head by Chris Carter. Yeah, he is. There's old Hardhead there. Yeah, he's got his thumb up. Yeah, yeah old, 
Yeah. Got the right hat on, the right jacket on. He got everything. Yeah. Old kick him in the head, hard hit. Third and one. Third on third. Three for six on third down. Young. Floyd. William Floyd. Ran like the fullback. Or halfback. First down, San Francisco. They have Steve Young again by his ball handling did hold the defense because it looked like he was going to run a keeper and Floyd was just going the other way. Floyd is back here now in the in the running back position. And then they have their other fullback, Edwards, in here. So they're using two fullbacks. In fact, they call this their big back offense. And you see Floyd just takes it up there and then he just outruns one guy. Ed McDaniel was right in there. And he took it to Ed McDaniel and then just ran, ran away from him. Two tight ends set up. That's Brent Jones, the motion man, the screen pass. Amanda William Floyd. William Floyd is really going to be all bar none. Remember yeah. how he, he got that nickname when he first came into the league? His agent said he's the best fullback in the draft, bar none. The, when he went to training camp, the players just started calling him bar none. And he had that serious knee injury and looked like it could be a career threatening. You see Steve Young's eyes that he had that phony frantic look. That phony frantic? Looking downfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you mean you throw it and then you look phony <laughs> <and> frantic? <laughs> yeah. At the 35. Steve yeah. Young has a lot of different looks, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Make it look shorter, smaller. Steve Young gets rid of it and completes it to William Floyd inside the 10 to the 5 and out of bounds. William Floyd couldn't run down there. It should have been a touchdown. He looked like a plow horse. But hey, that's what Steve Young gives you yeah. by buying that time and getting away from it. That's what Steve Young does here by getting some time. You see, you see what happens? John Randall just runs right over Milstead. But he gets away. Steve Young gets away from Randall, and then he looks to the outside. So he spins a little, looks to the outside, finds William Floyd out here, and Floyd just turns it on, but there's nothing there. Watch, he turned it, there's nothing there to turn on. He turned it's it like off. He pushed the gas, and nothing happened. He turned it off. Rob Wilson is a guard in there for Ray Brown, who just got run over on that play by John Randall. It's one of those things, if your guard doesn't block him, the quarterback has to take him. And Steve Young did take him. Again, that's the reason that Rod Milstead is in at the guard, because Ray Brown, the normal left guard, is being worked on. Let's say, I bet it's a contact lens. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, they're going to stick something in his eye, and I hope it's a contact lens. But they're retaping his ankle while they're walking in his eye. Jones again on the move. Sets up on the left. Young. Touchdown, San Francisco. Steve Young takes it to the end zone. See, and that's what all that ball handling does, and that's what all that faking does. I'm really surprised the way Steve Young is so beaten up that they did even call this play, but, but this is a reward for him, you know, being able to have good ball handling, and you see how everyone goes with the run then, and then he gets out of here, and there's just one guy that he has to beat. Unusual for him to roll in that direction to his right. Yeah, yeah, he usually runs and bootlegs and does everything like that to his left. Extra point. Orlando right. Thomas was up there and had a shot at him, and Steve Young just made a move on him. And so the 49ers increased their lead to two touchdowns. Do that. You see, he fakes with his left hand, puts the ball on his right hip, and then just goes to the outside. Orlando Thomas has the play there, and he just cuts inside him. But that's the old bootleg. Remember, yeah. they you started to do that, they would they would take the ball and fake it. Then they would put it on their hip, and in the old days, they used to just leave it on their hip and run with the ball on their hip. Look better that way. Palmer. Oh, and he hit at the 25. Boy, there's some hitting. Good, good hitting when the ball came real. Looks like it could be the 49ers' ball. Yeah. 
49ers lead the Vikings by two touchdowns, 28-14. Try and run, play action wise is wide open because this is a team that is having to gamble that time. You had a corner blitz from Otis Smith. He doesn't get the hardball in time because he actually rolls in the opposite direction. And it's Marvin Harrison on the crossing route. And the Colts now at the 45 yard line of the Jets. Whistles. And a flag on the play. This crowd has grown very, very quiet. With the exception of some boos when the Jet offense walks after, after a three and out. There is a whistle the in the stands. We're going to put the time back on the clock and replay the down. Oh, a whistle in the stands. You don't think, you don't think there is a... Five minutes, nine seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Vikings have the ball trailing by two touchdowns. Randall Cunningham is their quarterback. First and 10 at the 26. Cunningham back to throw and gets it outside to Robert uh, Charles Evans. And Evans will get a first down. You know, one thing that's been impressive about those 49er drives is the length of them. Yep. They've had an 80 yard drive for a touchdown of 45 a 70 and a 91 so they didn't get any of those short field type of deals they've they've had drives and when you have drives like that you really have to have good mixture and the 49ers have had that you know run and pass right and left short and deep all those kinds of things three wide receivers set up Leroy Horde working his way to the 44 for about five. This 49er defense is playing a lot better than they did last week Whoa. against Kansas City. Because it would hard to be, be hard to be much worse. Yeah, they were standing up and catching last week, and and the Chiefs ran on them, and and I think the 49er defense kind of took that to heart this week, and they weren't going to have much more of that. Well, that's what Gary Plummer was telling us yesterday. Time for us to stand up and take charge again. Cunningham. Gets across midfield, first down. Right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's return again to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat John, wild game between the Arizona Cardinals and Skins. Jake Plummer throws a pick. Chris Dishman takes it 29 yards to pay dirt and puts the Washington Redskins up. Hey, Arizona has answered back a 24-21 shootout in Arizona. Back to Pat and John. Backup quarterback Jeff Hostetler in that game for Washington. Randall Cunningham, the backup quarterback for Minnesota in San Francisco. Cunningham, incomplete, intended for Carter Woodson, the cover man, almost had an interception. Yeah, Rod Woodson was right there, and I think when you have big wide receivers the way both of these teams do and the way Randall Cunningham has with Jake Reed and Chris Carter here, I think I think you tend to throw a lot of these things and just let them, you know, you know, get position and just let them out muscle them. And that time Chris Carter couldn't out muscle Rod Woodson. Offensive coordinator Brian Billick. Yeah, he's right here. This is new for the Minnesota Vikings this game. They put both of their coordinators up in the booth. They've usually been on the sidelines until today. Second and ten. Hang on. Gets down at the 45, picked up three yards. Ken Norton Jr. took him down. I bet you Ken Norton Jr. on that play was spying Randall Cunningham because that's what they do. If a if you have a quarterback that is a runner, you always you always have have someone that's watching him. Now watch Ken Norton here. You see, and he's just going to look at Randall Cunningham. You see, and then he comes back, and he's just spying on him. He's watching him all the way. And Randall Cunningham breaks for a run. He's going to break on him. Third and seven. One running back. Cunningham back to throw it. His protection is good. Pass is caught by Carter, but that's a one-yard, two-yard gain, a flag on the play. And it's over there by uh, where Ken Norton was. Ken Norton was over there with David Palmer on the other side of the field is where the flag came, not on the side where the ball was thrown. 
Cunningham indicates it's against. If it is, it's going to be against Ken Norton. Right. Holding on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That was a clutch first down they got by penalty. Well, they didn't. They didn't say who it was, but it was on the other side yep. of the field, and it was Ken Norton because David Palmer was out there. You said who it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I say, and I'm going to stay with it. Here's Palmer out here, number 22. There's the hole right there, and you're going to see the flag come out right there. No question about it. <laughs> First down, Minnesota. That's automatic. There at the 49er 40. Here's Cunningham. Deep jump ball out of the end zone. Nothing wrong with his arm. Chris Carter was closest. Well, that's what Denny Green was talking about, and he told his receivers that that uh, Randall Cunningham has such a strong arm. Don't worry, just keep running because if you're on the football field, he can throw it that length. That time he throw it a little more than the football field. Yep. You know, one thing I think you have to give credit here is this this offensive line of the Minnesota Vikings. We talk about how Randall Cunningham is, you know, pretty comfortable in the stance. In the in the in the pocket, uh, his group has been doing a good job. Robert Smith chased by Hanks and herded out of bounds by Hanks at the 20. Did you see that stance of Randall McDaniel? Uh, yeah. you know, Randall McDaniel is one of the the best guards in the league, and and he and he has a, a funnier, different type of stance where he where he kind of puts his ankle out. And you see this this whole type of thing here, and, and he says that it gets him good leverage, and and he says it stabilizes things. He it said all. John Randall heard him talking to Todd Stucy, his left tackle. He was saying, try it because it stabilizes stuff. John Randall says, hey, he started doing that when he had a bad ankle, but now his left tackle, the guy next to him, is doing it. Hard in the backfield by Brian Young. That's the first time that Bryant Young really got penetration today. They've been doing a pretty good job in that in that middle of, of blocking Bryant Young. But watch him. He's gonna he's gonna be right here, and we're just gonna watch him and just watch how he takes off. And you see, once he starts down, once he gets inside, there's no way that that tackle is gonna be able to block him. Bryant Young has the inside there, and again he flattens out and goes to a point where he's gonna meet the running back. 13 yards needed for a first down. Cunningham takes the horde. Incomplete. That was a heck of a play by Tyrone Drakeford. And usually when they get into nickel and they get Drakeford out here, this is this is the area that they're going to go to work on. And you see Drakeford, he gets turned a little there, and then right there he makes a jump on the ball and comes underneath a Chris Carter. Perfect timing. Yeah, he got turned around, but then made a reaction and got back to it. That'll bring up the third 13 situation. I think that's the, the matchup that the Vikings were looking for is, is trying to get Chris Carter on Tyrone Drakeford. Carter and Hatchet are to the right, Jake Reed to the left. Cunningham again with time. Intended for the tight end, Andrew Glover. And the 49ers all over him. The 49ers play the nickel defense very well. Yes. I mean, that's that's the thing. They don't really get a, a big pass rush, but they have a lot of speed in those extra defensive backs, and they have excellent coverage. Eddie Murray has come in to attempt a field goal going to be 42 and a half 43 yards 42 call it and that's about his max in weather like this the field goal's good from Eddie Murray it's 28 17 now Randall Cunningham looking very sharp down the field even if they complete that one they're still third and 14. so now third and 17. an all-new x-files tonight at 9 and 8 central on fox the moon has made an appearance 
probably was there a long time, but we couldn't see it because of the cloud. Is that a half moon? Well, I think there's a whole moon up there. I don't think I don't think it's a full moon, is it? No, no, no it's like a half. But then I'm not uh, an astrologist. No, but I mean the things you see. If you just kind of look around here in San Francisco by the bay, you see some some great things. Short kick. The heck was that? Spins down to Mark Edwards. And Edwards caught from behind and tripped up at midfield. What kind of kick was that? I mean, that, I don't know. that didn't look, it looked like halfway between an onside, a squib, and a regular kick. It's like the last shot out of a Roman candle. Not going to reach the moon. The candidate for the coaching job at the University of Arkansas. In fact, he's going to fly to the University of Arkansas tomorrow and interview for the job, and supposedly they're going to have a press conference down there on Wednesday to he's announce their head coach. The last of the candidates to be interviewed. He wants the job. And he's done a heck of a job with the 49ers special team. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. San Francisco 28, Minnesota 17. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Bird Reynolds. The sights of San Francisco, the cable car, the famous cable cars. Second and six, right? At the ball yard, Steve Young just heads for the turf. Yeah, I wonder what Sid Gilman is thinking of, of Steve Young today. Sid <laughs> Gilman, of course, one of the all-time great pro coaches. Coach for the, the Rams, the San Diego Chargers, Houston. One of the one most of, innovative guys ever. Yeah, and, you know, a great passing coach and a great quarterback coach. In fact, he was Steve Young's quarterback for the LA Express. And Steve Young said, I don't know if it weren't for Sid Gilman if I would be where I am today. to Stokes who hangs on and picks up a first down for San Francisco. And Steve Young can talk just like Sid Gilman. Oh, he Sid sounds... Gilman, yeah, lives in San Diego <laughs> yeah. and calls him up and he says, what are you doing? What is that? What is that? What's that pass pattern you guys are running? <laughs> what did you have in mind? <laughs> and, you know, you know, you know Sid, Sid still watches all the tape, watches all the games. I know the Kansas City Chiefs send them all their games. Carl Peterson told us last week and Sid's always trying to get 49er film and any other film he can to evaluate. And once a coach, always a coach. Two tight end set up. Pitch back to Floyd and nothing there. Colin A made the stop. Stalin Colin A. The 49ers have really done a, 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 a good job. We talked about Dave, of, of just mixture. I mean, it seems like Steve Mariucci calls the plays, and it seems like every down there's been a different personnel group. Yeah. It's been a different type of play. He mixed up his passes and his runs inside and outside, gotten the ball to everyone, used his entire offense. But this group in here, the offensive line, has really made a lot of it happen. Young to Kirby. Tripped up. The loss of Garrison Hurst, and people thought that the 49ers would then go back to being what they were five or six years ago, a passing team, but they've maintained the balance. Well, you know, Steve Mariucci was saying yesterday that even he wasn't sure that they were going to be able to do it. He said, we we're going to be able to try. We're going to try and do it. We're going to try and do it with Terry Kirby. We're going to try and do it more, you know, getting William Floyd more involved in the game. But that I don't know if we're going to be able, and if we can't, then we're just going to have to go back and rely on the pass all the time. And Young, back to throw, and he can get it. But the fake, and he was brought down from behind by Derek Alexander. And he's lucky that he didn't throw that one because yep. he was over the line of scrimmage, and he probably knew on that one fake did. That, that he was over the line of scrimmage. I wonder what Sid Gilman thought of that one. 
He said the thing that he learned from Sid Gilman was footwork. And he said had he not had that footwork that he learned from Sid Gilman when he came to, to the 49ers, he said there's no way that Bill Walsh being such a fundamentalist would have ever kept him. 51-yard field goal attempt coming up from Gary Anderson. This might be a little longer. Bounces right at the back of the end zone under the goal post. And so the Vikings will take over back at the spot of the kick. So that's the break for Denny Green in Minnesota. Cunningham, the Vikings are at the 40. Robert Smith picks up about four. December the 7th, World War II began back in 1941 with the attack on Pearl Harbor. The last of the great wars, they said. Second and six. The ball's loose. Cunningham saying I was down. 49ers have the ball. Dolman. I think the two ex-Vikings were in there at the same yeah. time. Roy Barker and Chris Dolman. I don't know that Cunningham didn't hand off to them. Watch Chris Dolman. He, he's right here. Barker's right here. They're going to come. They're just going to come from the outside. Watch Dolman. He's just coming right here. I don't know that he doesn't get the handoff right in the middle of it. He almost did. He almost did because it is. he got there about the same time Randall Cunningham was trying to make the handoff. He broke up the handoff. You see, he's trying to reach. Cunningham doesn't get the ball out there. He is reaching for Evans, the fullback. And all of a sudden, here's Dolman. Either Charles Evans somehow went a little wider than Randall Cunningham expected him to. Vikings coming on a blitz. Young fires incomplete. Chuck Levy was the intended receiver. You know, without Garrison Hurst, we talk about the 49ers and their running game, and I always said until they got Garrison Hurst that their best running back was, was Steve Young. Steve Young was their quarterback and best running back, and it's the same thing that's really happening today because if you look right now, the 49ers' leading rusher is Steve Young. So they've kind of gone back to that a little, too. You know, they're going to have more run and more rushing yardage and this guy here is the leading rusher. Will you ever forget a run he made, oh, what, six, eight years ago against Minnesota for about 65 yards? One of the best runs I've ever seen by anybody, running back, quarterback, anybody. Right, and it was, it was going this way. Yep. It was going the same way they're going now. And he come in and it broke out to that left side and, and scored down there in that left end zone. Waved the ball over a couple of guys' heads as he jumped over them. Yep. And you know what's going to be the good news for this 49er team? Next week, they get Jerry Rice back. And I watched him practice yesterday. Whoa. He looked good. I mean, he. I believe now that he is going to play next week. That's somewhat of a miracle. Here comes the blitz again. And Young gets out of it. And gets it. To J.J. Stokes, who gets in a fighting contest with the Vikings secondary. Well, is, that's going to continue a little bit. Now, they haven't knocked that off and just go back in the huddle. That stuff, you know, you play you play from the time the ball snaps till the whistle blows. Anything that happens after the whistle blows doesn't count. You know, if you're going to be tough, if you're going to do all those things, do it from the time the ball snaps till the whistle blows, not after. See, Steve Young is trying to get his guys huddle up there, and they're losing time going chest to chest against the gutters. They don't have the right guys in there. They're going to have to take a timeout. Uh, the Vikings had to take this timeout. They Both didn't teams have the right. were confused. Yeah. They, were, they were doing too much chest button. 9.15 left to play. 49ers lead by 11. I just heard the Goodyear blimp was going to take it back to the house because they're expecting another storm coming in here. It is getting darker, too, isn't it? Does a blimp have a house out here? Well, yeah. It has, I mean, a big old blimp has to have a big old house. Yeah. So what they do is they tie it down. They tether it. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's that's what you do. I mean, you bring it in. See, and then you have these things that come down like this, and then you tie them to the ground like this, and then you say the blimp is tethered, and then everyone goes home. 
Looks like that blimp is heading right into the storm, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? He's supposed to go yeah. away from the storm. He may not have long enough tethers. Well, it probably has to go find its place where it can tether. Now the birds are getting ready. Yeah, well, they've been down for a little snack already. And they are <laughs> right now. Yeah, have a little uh, there's a whole bunch of them out there in the 40. I mean, that's a that's a good meal out there. The didn't get that. Did not get it. The Vikings take over. <laughs> How do the birds know when the commercial comes? At their own 30. Throw. Evans, the intended receiver, and for McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Hey, Pat, here's why they call Jake Plummer the snake. Look at his moves. Finally finds tight end Chris Getty, 37 yards to score. Last six games between these two teams have been decided by six points or less. The last three have gone down to the final play. We're in the fourth quarter. Washington on top by three. Pat and John. 9.04 left to play here at Precom Park. Cunningham back to throw it again. Maybe. And does. Has a man open. That's Jake Reed. Reed out of bounds at the 49er 38. Yeah, I was just going to say this 49er secondary has been doing a good job on Jake Reed because that's just the third pass he caught. Chris Carter has only caught two passes, but then here he does this. You see, he makes a little move on Marquez Pope. And then he gets the inside. Now, once he gets the inside, he can keep Pope to the outside and then run that deep in. I don't think Marquez Pope is ever going to get there. First down, Minnesota at the San Francisco 38. The handoff is to Evans, the fullback. Not much. Weather is headed in, and it's starting to rain again. I think it's in, you know. If you look here, here's the radar on the blimp, and the green is the rain. So there's a whole bunch of rain coming in. See, and they know it, and it's already here. Like it's going right through them. Look at it. In sheets, it was raining like that when we got here this morning, and the sunshine and the moon came out. In fact, there's still a lot of blue skies around. That radar knows what it's doing. Here's Cunningham. Incomplete for Glover. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the NFL is prohibited. Now he's too young to do that. <laughs> he yep. better cover his face because if his mother sees him I think he'd be in trouble or his dad, or his uncle, or anyone. Third and eight, and now the wind and the rain both make an appearance. Cunningham back to throw. And down he goes, and the ball came out of his hands. I think he got it back. Vikings will have to punt. This is a tough field here in yeah. San Francisco. Oh, yeah. You know, it's never, it's never been a good field. And, uh, you know, I mean, part of it is the weather. Part of it is right at sea level. And it's always kind of damp. And always had problems here with this field. Berger. Levy back to field. Let's it hop. It hops into the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. Not what the Vikings would have hoped for. 28-17, San Francisco. The rain hammering down. There's Jerry Rice back there with a the towel wrapped around his head. This in practice. Yeah, I watched him in practice yesterday, and we had seen him a week ago in Kansas City, yeah. and he looks like he was 50% better. After watching him yesterday, I said to myself, I believe that he really is going to play next Monday night against the Broncos. He said he had very little swelling. Here's Steve Young in the rain now. Hands off to William Floyd. You 
Yeah, the other thing that's going on Thunder. here, Pat, <laughs> yeah, say, we don't see a lot of that here in the in the Bay Area is thunder and lightning. In fact, when the when the first crack of thunder and lightning came, the uh, the crowd started to cheer. And it was a pretty good pop, pretty close by. Not going to bother his hair. That's old David Dixon, the big right guard of the Minnesota Vikings. Second and eleven. Young fakes. Drops it up the field to J.J. Stokes, who makes a nice turning back over the shoulder catch. Steve Young looks like he's uh, uncomfortable, hurting. Well, got he, a first down, though. Well, he saw the flag back there, and he went back to check on it to see that it wasn't against him. No foul. Roughing the passer. Number 90. 15-yard penalty from the end of the catch. First Derek down. Alexander. And you're going to see, you see, he throws the ball, and Alexander, I think the one, the late, the, the hit was late, but then the other thing that he did, he's going to come from right here, the other thing he does is drive him into the ground, and I think that's, that's probably where the penalty was, you know, a little for the late hit, but then more for driving him into the ground after he'd thrown the ball. 6-15, less than that now left, first and 10. Right at midfield for the 49ers. Blitz coming at midfield. Right now, let's return again to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood for a game break. Pat, the Redskins must win to try to stay just a game back of the Giants. Here's a pro who never gets up. Gives up, that is. Henry Ellert calls in that 23-yard pass from Jeff Hosteller. Now a 10-point Washington lead in the fourth. Washington trying to hang in. Back to Pat and John. Boy, watching that highlight. Yeah. Ha Settler is an old pro who. Yeah, and he found Henry Ellard. Yeah. I wonder who was supposed to be covering Henry Ellard. There was no one there. No. More thunder. Listen to it. Look at the rainbow. Kirby gets the carry to the 45 yard line of the Vikings. I knew that this was going to be a rainbow day because when you get when you get the rain and then the sun and those two things mixed up, you usually get the big old rainbow like that. And the 49ers searching and approaching that pot of gold down at the bottom. Well, of course, that pot of gold for them would be the, the home field advantage, you know, clinching the home field advantage throughout so that they already have a bye in the first week in the playoffs, and then to get the next thing they can get is a, a home field throughout. Kirby. Knocked down on third down by Pete Barisic. The playoff picture, the top six teams make the playoffs. The 49ers, the Packers, the Giants, if they can win one more. Tampa Bay, Minnesota, Detroit, Washington, Philadelphia with an outside shot. Or has Dallas eliminated them? And then the the buys that we were talking about, the if it goes this way, the two teams would have the first round buy would be the 49ers and the Green Bay Packers. Those are the top teams at the moment. Sliding down at the 10. You know, this is what I like about about tailgating. You know, that, that even even if it's raining, you know, I mean, you plan something all week. You know, you call, who's going to bring the meat? You know, you talk on Wednesday. Who's going to bring the stuff? Who's going to load the car on Wednesday? You know, on Thursday, and then, you know, come Sunday, you can't say, well, we're not going to do it because it's raining. But you don't build your fire close to the gas. First and 10, Sometimes that's, that's a lot of fun out there. You know, I mean, those people, they have a heck of a time before they ever get in here. Have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah, I've done that. 
I have some I have some friends that do it right here in San Francisco and it used to be bigger in fact Floyd the barber was telling me one time that that uh, tailgating and barbecuing was better when the 49ers were bad be you know you know because you could get a big place in the Room parking lot out, yeah. yeah yeah and you could get all your people and add the flags and all that stuff and then he said as as the 49ers got better the tailgating went down because it was tougher to get parking you tell me that you went parking lot barbecuing yeah man the coach yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what did Floyd you bring Floyd the bar nothing my appetite <laughs> Floyd the barbers I went to Look at that rainbow now. Brilliant. Now it's looking like a real rainbow, isn't it? Yeah, you know, there's there's two rainbows yeah. out there now. Look, here's one right here, and here's one right here. Now we're talking rainbows. Serious rainbows. Dolman just got his third sack. Look at the 49ers. They're really in a prevent now. Clock running less than three minutes, and Cunningham back in the pocket. Knocked away. Attended for Carter. You know, isn't it funny how a team gets in a prevent and the prevent works and no one ever mentions it? Yeah, but right. I'll guarantee you, if you get in a prevent and everyone is off and you're playing soft, watch Woodson back here reading this. He's going to knock the ball down. And you're playing soft, and they go down and score. Oh, you catch heck for being in a prevent. <laughs> But when it works, it's never mentioned. That's when you wish you were out there with those at barbecue. Right. I mean, no one's. Well, you know, you know, when I did that, I will say was was after I was coaching. I never did it when I was coaching. Oh, I used to stop by in my way out. <laughs> Burgers punt low and bouncing. Ways the K gets it to the 40. First. Next Saturday, and a reminder again, this is next Saturday because the college season is over. The NFL starts to play on Saturday. The Redskins-Giants, a very important game to both. Then on Sunday, the Cowboys and the Bengals, the Lions, Vikings, Buccaneers, and the Jets, and the Eagles against Atlanta. And then uh, the Packers against Carolina, that's where we'll be, and the Cardinals and Saints. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's great to be able to see the two best teams in the NFC back to back. I mean, I think that, that the Green Bay Packers and the 49ers are the two best teams in the NFC. And then, of course, we did, I, I think, the two best teams in the AFC are Denver and Kansas City. So in the last three or four weeks, we've really been able to see the four top teams in the NFL. So the all-Madden team this year ought to be pretty representative of the now best in talking. pro football. than they did a week ago. And they're going to get Jerry Rice back for the next game. Too. We got some things going. William Floyd. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. The associate director is Mike Roig. Broadcast associates are Fran Morrison and Charles McDonald. The technical producer is Bob Muller. The studio was produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. The senior producer is Bill Brown. And the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. Yeah, we were just looking at a, a picture there of, of Brent Jones, who's in the in the huddle, 12-year veteran for the San Francisco 49ers. You know, he has a cast on his wrist, and uh, he said they just put the cast on this week that he broke his, his wrist like two or three weeks yeah. ago and didn't even know it. And didn't know it. He said he was catching passes and knew what. Whether my wrist hurts or it really hurts when the ball hits or any, I mean, anything he did hurt him. And then they finally found out that, uh, lo and behold, uh, he has a broken wrist. So they put a cast on it. And the tough guy who's played through a heck of a lot of injuries and played very, very well. And not a big guy who was held up to a lot of punishment. Yeah, you know, we were talking about Jerry Rice. Like he's going to come back like that's a done thing. Well, I was talking to the 49er team doctor, Dr. Michael Dillingham, and he was the surgeon who operated on Jerry Rice. And he said he has to be the first guy. I mean, you know, Jerry Rice just can't say he's coming back. Dr. Dillingham has to clear him first. Next week, he hopes. Two-minute warning. Two minutes left in San Francisco, the 49ers 28, the Minnesota Vikings 17. Pat Summerall with John Madden and 
Vikings put the rush on Thompson. David Palmer back deep to field it. Six. The 49ers also down to field it. And they down it at the four. Tyrone Drakeford. Drakeford almost carried that thing into the end zone. Yeah. Yeah, you talk about, you know, three-quarter inch cleats, half-inch cleats, and, and then you get in mud like that. It doesn't make doesn't any difference. doesn't make any difference. That's uh, right. Whatever, whatever cleat it is is going to go into the ground as deep as it can go. It's new shoes next week. And new socks. and I used to always be able to tell guys speed, but, you know, when they play in mud, yep. the, the, the mark up their back, the higher the mark goes up their back for mud, the faster they were. I mean, guys that didn't run very fast, they just had it up to, like, their knees. Guys like Chris, Chris Branch would throw mud all the way back to their shoulders. Cunningham retreats into the end zone and throws pass caught by Chris Carter. I think these corners, you know, you know, Rod Woodson and Marquez Pope have really done a pretty good job because if you're going to stop the Vikings, you have to stop their running, you know, which the 49er defense did the front, but you also have to stop Chris Carter and Jake Reed. It's Cunningham with no place to go. Sacked by Kevin Green this time. One of the all-time leading sackers. This is Kevin Green. I mean, I mean, now he can really take off yep. because because he doesn't have to worry. Remember earlier they were running on him when he lined up like that. Cunningham throws for Glover, incomplete. Yeah, I think you know. You know, we talked last week about how this was a barometer for the 49ers. I mean, you know, every game isn't a meaningful game when you're so far ahead in the standings, but just to see where you stood, and then and then they flunked their barometer yeah. test last week against the Kansas City Chiefs, but. I think today against the Vikings, they got a little bit of it back. And I think against Denver is going to be another barometer of where they stand with the best in football. Different kind of measuring stick, though, the Vikings. Pass is intercepted, I believe, by Tyrone Drakeford. And intended for Chris Carter. I think they're saying that Tyrone Drakeford stepped out of bounds right where he intercepted the ball. So all the 49ers have to do is run it out now as Minnesota doesn't have any timeouts left. Here's Tyrone Drakeford right there. You see playing a zone. Reed and Randall Cunningham seeing it. Just going up for the jump ball. Keeping both feet in bounds. That was Hatchet for whom the pass was intended. I'll tell you, Chris Dolman has really been all over yep. Randall Cunningham, especially in this second half. He has three and a half sacks. Or in fact, he just put up a four. Maybe he, he may want a credit for that. So that, I guess, if you if you knock the quarterback down and he throws an interception, that ought to equal a sack. That is a big, broad back of Kevin Gogan. He did a good job today. Yeah, they did, because one of the, the things that they had to do in their pass protection and running was handle John Randall because John Randall is the, the big force on that Viking middle defense, and those guys did a good job in that. Time to take a knee. Let that clock run out and get out of this mess. Denny Green. He has to wonder what's happening to them. I mean, yeah. they started out, and they were playing so well, and with this loss today, they will have lost four in a row. Yep. They have remaining Detroit and Indianapolis. And when you lose four in a row, it doesn't make any difference who the opponent is. You just want to get a win and just get this thing turned around, which Steve Mariucci did today. This play coming up is the play of the game brought to you by Energizer. This one here had everything. It was Chris Carter lined up out here. He's going to run a post pattern on Marquez Pope. But watch that post. He holds him in there. Randall Cunningham throws it high. He jumps, keeps both feet inbound. That was a heck of a catch. It really was. Let's quickly send you down to Pam Oliver with Chris Dolman. All right, thanks, Pat. He's a little out of breath, so uh, we'll forgive him for that because you were pretty busy out there. Three and a half sacks, always a nice thing against your former team. Well... It is. It really is. Uh, it took me four years to get a chance to play against them. I don't have anything personal. Uh, 
I enjoyed my time there. I appreciate the, the fans and everything. It was just nice to get a chance to play against them. What's it like for you guys, this defense, to come back? I talked with some of the guys earlier this week. You wanted to come back and sort of reestablish that you are a dominant defense. Well, you know, what happened last week is, is behind us. Getting beat by one point or getting beat by 40 points, still a loss. And uh, this team has a lot of pride, a lot of great players, and uh, we're just not going to go easy. All right, Chris, go, go catch your breath. Thanks, a lot. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Let's go back upstairs to Pat. No. Chris Dillman gasping for breath. I don't, I'm not sure he could have answered another question. So the 49ers, 28-17 over the Vikings. 